Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll use any video as a particle emitter, meaning the video itself will act as a source for spawning particles. Our goal is to position the particles along the edges of the video, creating a dynamic effect based on its motion and contrast. Before we start, I want to share some important updates. After testing different methods, I've refined the way I deliver tutorials to make them clearer, more efficient, and shorter, so no one gets lost along the way. To follow this tutorial, here's what you need to know. 1. Network setup. I'll provide a screenshot of the full network. If it's too large, I'll break it into multiple images with clear indications so you can recreate it without constantly pausing the video. 2. Parameters. Instead of adjusting parameters live, I'll display them as static images, allowing you to copy them at your own pace without interruptions. Let's get started. Chapter 1. Overview. The most important concept in this network is a core principle of Touch Designer, how to turn RGB color data into XYZ spatial information. If you can grasp this idea, you'll be able to apply it to countless other scenarios in your projects. For now, just focus on mastering this technique for our tutorial, and you'll have everything you need. Let's talk about how the reorder operator helps us transform color channels into 3D coordinates for our particle system. In Touch Designer, each color channel, R, G, B, can be interpreted as an axis, X, Y, Z. By using two ramp operators, one set vertically and the other horizontally, we combine their grayscale outputs, effectively creating a perfect 2D grid for the X and Y axes. When we reorder these ramps into the red and green channels, we get a neat coordinate system that defines each point's horizontal and vertical position. Next, we bring the video feed into the blue channel, which acts as the Z axis. That means any brightness or movement in the video translates into depth information. In other words, wherever the video is brighter, points will shift higher or lower in the Z dimension. If you switch the reorder operator to view as points, you'll see a 3D point cloud forming from these three channels working together. Finally, all of this feeds into the particle's GPU operator. Now we have a proper 3D coordinate map. X from the first ramp, Y from the second, and Z from the video that tells the particle system exactly where to emit particles. This way, we're essentially building an entire emission grid in three dimensions, driven by both simple ramps and a dynamic video feed. Perfect. With this understood, the rest of the network is straightforward. It consists of several pre-processing modules designed to mix the images and complete the desired effect. Hi, I'm Okamirufu, and I'm absolutely obsessed with Touch Designer. In my free time, I do my best to share everything I know and make it as easy as possible for others to learn. If you want to dive much deeper and join nearly 3,000 people already on my Patreon, you'll get access to free VJ packs, all the project files from my YouTube tutorials, exclusive components and plugins, and a fully organized shop with conceptual VJ packs, more advanced plugins, and much more. Everything is perfectly arranged in collections, so you can easily browse and find exactly what you need. And if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine too. You can buy individual project files anytime, no strings attached. So if you want to learn way more, create better visuals, and support what I do, check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Chapter 2. Network. Remember, I'll now show you a screenshot of the network so you can copy it. Depending on its complexity, it might take more than one screenshot, and I'll include clear indications whenever necessary. Before we continue, thank you all for watching and subscribing. Reaching over 15,000 subscribers in just 10 months has exceeded my expectations. Still, 77.1% of viewers haven't subscribed. If my videos help you, please hit subscribe. It really supports creating more high-quality touch designer tutorials. Chapter 3. Parameters Alright, I'm going to explain how this network works while we review the parameters that best match the results we want to achieve. Here, I've simply placed a horizontal video and in the RGB key, where we're going to remove the black background, I've set output resolution to parent panel size. Since we're working in vertical format, this will stretch the video. Obviously, if you choose a vertical video, it might work better for you. Now, in the RGB key, I've only adjusted the red min value to eliminate the black background. After that, the level top allows me to increase the intensity of the blue channel. Because depending on its brightness, 
we'll get more displacement along the z-axis. Remember, blue equals the z-axis, because that's how I assigned it in the reorder operator, which we'll review in a moment. Next, we move on to the reorder, where we'll assign each input to an output channel in an organized way, so we can convert RGB into XYZ coordinates. So, the first input, the horizontal ramp, will be assigned to the red channel. The second input will go to the green channel. And finally, the third input, which is the video, will be assigned to the blue channel. This way we ensure that we generate the coordinates for the particle system. Perfect. The select below is referencing the RGB key because we want to keep the same colors from the video so they can be replicated in the particle system. Now, go to the particle system and copy these parameters. Of course, you can play with each value to get different results, and if you want to know exactly what each parameter does, I recommend taking a screenshot of this screen and pasting it into ChatGPT to get a super simple explanation of what each one does. Next, go to the Material tab. Set Constant as the material. And under Texture, select Custom. Now drag the circle top into the Particle Texture Map field. Then open the circle and adjust only the softness parameter to improve the look of the particles. Finally, reference the keyboard into the reset parameter of the particles. And also reference it to the feedback operator we'll use later on. Remember that for the ramp operators, one must be set to horizontal and the other to vertical. These are the only settings you need to apply here. Now go to the transform. Here we only want to adjust the scale on the x-axis. This helps align the particles more accurately with the video. Perfect. Let's move on to the feedback network. Remember that the composite top must be referenced inside the feedback operator. If you haven't done this yet, make sure to do it now. Next, go to the blur top and play around with the two main parameters, pre-shrink and filter size. For now, the values I'm using work well. The level top is only used to control how much feedback you want to apply, so you only need to adjust the opacity and feel where it looks best. Now, set the composite top to over mode. After that, the select top is calling the RGB key again, with the original video colors untouched. These last two operators are connected to a final composite top, where you can try different blending modes. I use brightest, which works quite well, and finally, I'm dragging and dropping this RGB key on top of the last select top that's connected to the output. And that's it. That's all for this simple network. Try using different videos, fine tune the particles. And one important thing I forgot to mention, go back to the particles GPU. Sometimes when you first connect everything, you might not see any particles and that's because the camera isn't pointing at them properly. So like with any 3D object in Touch Designer, and manually adjust the camera's position until you see the particles and get close to the final result. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or join the discussion.